<clears throat> Mr. Smestad. Will you please state your name and spell your last name? Andrea Baldazzo, B-A-L-D-A-Z-O. And what do you do for a living? I'm a registered nurse. Um, where, where do you work? Uh, Fairview Lakes in Wyoming. Uh, what town do you live in? Uh, Forest Lake. Um, do you recall uh, July, the day of July 30th of 2022? Yes, I do. Um, what were you doing on that day? Um, my family and I had gone boating on the, or uh, tubing on the Apple River. Do you recall where you put in on the Apple River? Where we put in? Yeah, where, where, uh, the river's saying? edge is where we parked and we got in there. All right. Um, who were you with, generally speaking? My husband, my three children that are teenagers, um, a group of friends with us, and my husband's cousin. Um, were you folks having drinks? Yes. Uh, did you specifically have some alcoholic drinks? I did. Do you remember how many? I think it was two to three. I had two White Claws, and I think I had a sip of Shelley's Cayman Jacks. Uh, do you think you were impaired? Uh, buzzed, not not drunk. All right. At some point, as you're floating down the river, did you become involved with an incident um, where some folks have been injured? Yes. Tell us how that started. Um, we had grouped our, our tubes together. We had tied them together, and so I ended up kind of on the back end and I was floating down the river backwards and my husband said those people are having a good time or they're having quite a party something along those lines and I turned my head to the right and I could see um, one person laying down on the river's edge and another person further down and people were what I had thought was laughing but turned into screaming um, um, yelling What did you do when you when you saw? Uh, I, I knew somebody was hurt, and so I jumped off the raft and ran across the river. Well, I kind of, it was so slow, I was trying to run fast, but the water was too thick. So then I ended up kind of falling forward and army crawling across to him. And when I got up, there was um, a blonde boy. Did you know who that, that boy was? Did you find out later who it was? Yes. Who was it? Isaac. Um, did you approach Isaac? I did. Um, Where was he located by the time you got to him? He was um, on the bank, kind of with his right arm in the lake or in the whatever the river. Um, there was a kind of a copse of trees um, right before where he was laying, and kind of up into the edge there. And then um, a little further down, there was somebody else sitting. I thought was sitting. By somebody else, do you mean somebody else? Like another, another somebody hurt. All right. Did you focus your attention on Isaac? I did. did when, when you arrived to where Isaac was, did your nurse training kick in? Yes. So he was lying on his back. Um, his eyes were open but not blinking. Uh, he was not breathing. So I started chest compressions uh, right away and continued that for a long time. Did you make a primary assessment of his wound? I, um, I, I saw that there was uh, a large cut. At first I thought he had been impaled on the set of roots and branches that were hanging down just prior to that. But then I looked and it was a, a slash mark, not, not an impale thing. It was a long and thin and clean cut. Where was it located on his body? On his left chest, upper chest, kind of his ribs. All right. So what? I, I asked, um, I was doing compressions and doing compressions and I, um, people were screaming and it was making me lose count. So I think I yelled out to somebody, shut up or stop screaming um, so that I could count. Uh, there were other people around. I asked for somebody to get me anything that I could use as a chest seal, a Ziploc bag, anything to put over that wound. Um, I didn't want any water or anything getting in there, but um, I looked down at Isaac and um, there was some vomit coming from his mouth at some point. So I asked to turn somebody, the kid up front, to turn his head, which he did. And the kid splashed some eyes or some water, which got in his eyes. And I, I said, don't splash water in his face anymore. Um, and it just continued forever. It felt like forever that we did compressions. I kept asking, where's the rig? Why isn't it here yet? By rig, do you mean, what do you mean? Ambulance. Do you have an idea now as you sit here how long you performed chest compressions on Isaac? I said 45 minutes because I think that's, I, I, I thought that's what it was, but somebody corrected me later that it wasn't 
it felt like forever. I mean, we were going and going round after round. Other people were performing compressions. We were singing Baby Shark to keep people on the rhythm. Or you were taking turns, giving them. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, um, when somebody had taken over a, a round of compressions for me, I got up and went to check, uh, walked just a few steps further down the river to check the other victim, but it looked to me like they were up and speaking and conscious, so I went back to Isaac because he was not. Um, do you have experience dealing with trauma cases? Yes. Uh, at the hospital where you work, are you involved in trauma care? Um, I'm a primarily a med surge nurse, but I do float down to the emergency room and involved in code situations. What's a med surge nurse? Med surge, it's a medical surgical floor, so typically we have post-op patients, um, anybody from pancreatitis to um, just just a little bit of everything. Uh, eventually, did um, law enforcement and EMTs arrive? Yes. Were you still with Isaac at that point? Yes. Uh, was he taken off the river? Yes. Um, did you see any of the altercation prior to, to your giving care to Isaac? I did not. Have you had any other involvement in this case? No. Oh. So when he, you testified earlier that your your husband had alerted you that he thought there was some kind of party going on, mm -hmm. do you know whereabouts in the river you were? Um, so where Isaac was laying just a little bit further, um, I guess if I'm looking at Isaac laying on the ground and the second person was a little further down, just a little further up were those roots and branches that I thought somebody had gotten stuck on. Um, were you near the bend in the river in that, in that location? If you remember, I, I don't remember a bend. I mean, I, it, the whole thing is windy, so um, yeah. I mean, I could show you on a map or a picture. We do have a blow up of the map. If I can get that exhibit. <clears throat> yes. Ma'am, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 25A. I want to be able to do this so that the jury can see. Do you, do you recognize this? Yes. And can you tell us what it is? Um, the Apple River. Uh, you indicated that you started at River's Edge? Correct. So we came down this way. Um, I would have been right here. It. We came around. Yeah, let, me, let me do it this way. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So we were floating this way and I guess yes but then we must have just come around a little bend because I'm guessing that copse of trees was right here and so I was floating backwards and it was on my right and you pointed at the area on the exhibit that says incident location correct so your testimony you were coming oh around I'm there. sorry yes this is the river that's the highway so coming uh, around that bend yeah this bend I'm sorry okay if this is the end down here and this is the start would you have been going this way I know it's hard to see yeah, I, I guess I just don't know which way the river goes. Oh, so, so yes, yeah, so this is the start and this is this is the exit? Right. Yep, so we would have come down this way and I would have been going backwards here and it was on my right. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. Mr. Your Office? Uh, I just have a couple questions for you, ma'am. Um, I think you said that you were tubing with your family, is that right? Correct. Okay, and your, your husband was with you, is that right? Correct. Okay. And you, your group, or you and your husband and your children, uh, your husband brought a knife, didn't he? Correct. Okay. And can you tell us what was that? What was that for? Uh, we bring paracord with us when we go tubing. Um, so it, if we don't bring paracord, we'll use the twine at the um, river's edge, and we pull all our tubes together to carry our coolers, our food, uh, just kind of generally keep the group together because it's a bigger group when we go. Okay. And, and he uses the knife to cut that paracord. Apologies. That's okay. And do you remember or can you describe the knife that your husband had? 
Um, it was a flip, flip one uh, where you flip it open and it locks into place and then you move the lever and it relocks. Okay. And it had a clip on it. If I said to you it's kind of like a pocket knife that that is closed and then you can take the blade and you can open and lock the blade. Is that is that fair? Correct. Okay. And only answer this if you know. Um, your husband followed you after you jumped off your tube to run over to see what was going on or to render aid. Is that That's right? That's correct. Do you know whether or not your husband pulled out his knife? I don't. Have you talked to your husband about the case or about the incident? Um, previous, but we were asked not to speak about it later, so we didn't. But we, we've talked about it off and on over the years prior to this. Okay. Do you know that your husband's knife was lost? I did after. Okay. I, I found out after that it had been lost. Do you know, well, I'll ask it to you this way. His knife was lost near the incident, right? I don't know at what point it was lost. Okay. He, he is, I, I don't know. Okay. Do you, your, your statement talks about um, that your husband picked up a, a snorkel. Did you see that? I saw him pick it up, yes. Okay. When he picked it up, did you see a confrontation happen then? When he picked it up? Or shortly thereafter? When I say confrontation, did you see people um, starting to yell or um, confront your husband about picking that up? No. No? Okay. Did you see your husband give that snorkel to the police? Uh, no, he picked it up out of the river after Isaac was going, and it was just like a clear plastic, clear white plastic mask. And then I, I don't know what he did with it afterwards. I, I don't know if he dropped it. I don't know if he gave it to somebody. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Smestad, do you have any other questions? Further All right. Thank you, Ms. Baldozo. Thank you. You are excused. Uh, 